Running It Back is presented to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser and Hawaiian Telecom. Welcome to Running It Back. I'm here with Chad Owens, Ryan Kilmaka, and former UH receiver and former NFL player with the Miami Dolphins and Cleveland Browns, Devon Bess. Yeah. Welcome. Go, baby. And Devon Bess is definitely blessed. blessed. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that, man. Bomb, like that. man. Thanks hey, for having me, though. Bro, no. The pleasure is ours, yes, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man. Um, I, I was really, really excited about this one, bro, because your story is unbelievable, man. And it's going to inspire a lot of people. You know, while you're, when you're down here in Hawaii, you and your family, uh, chilling, catching up, man, we got to sit down and catch up and we got to dive deep into your story. And I just, I can't wait for you to share with everyone, man, and sort of um, inspire, you know, inspire mm -hmm. everyone, man. So thank you. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Yeah, man. Um, let, let's man let's just talk about let's talk about the family bro how how is the family doing i know you got you know you married you got the the three kids beautiful beautiful children man thank you thank you um every everybody's good man so my daughter she's uh, she's the oldest like we, she was born my rookie year when i was in miami uh she'll be 13 in november um uh, my middle child kingston he's uh he'll be 11 in october and then my youngest uh, my youngest child is uh, eight. He'll be nine in November, man. So uh, I got to I got to remember, man, like it's, it's, I'm I got too many children, man. I'm losing count, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to keep up with these birthdays these days. You know what I'm saying? But uh, extremely blessed, man. I've uh, been married uh, to my wife uh, for 13 years. We've been together 15 years or something like that, man. But, um, you know, like like anything, you know. A lot of ups and downs, but at the end of the day, it's all about, um, you know, family first, you know, the, the foundation, the core, and that's what kind of um, keeps the engine and everything else going, you know? Yeah, man. And you talk about the family. We're going to get back to that because I know they are a, they're a pillar for you. They are the, the, the driving force. You know, you mentioned a, a lot of ups and downs. I'm going to sort of like, I'm going to try my best, bro, to help, you know, help assist. I don't need to, I don't need to tell your story, but I want to make sure the viewers <laughs> and listeners, bro, they understand you know your come up and and how how it and and why it's so inspiring so ups and downs bro Excuse me. you know your your high school career you know going to a top the top high school in in in, in oak is it oakland right skyline yeah yeah that's yeah, basically correct. the farm system for all these big colleges right yeah, take us yeah. back to 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 your senior year von where you know you were on the high and you were getting ready to take off man take us back yeah man so um you know, Oakland, just to give you a little um, preview of that, you know, Oakland was a, you know, rough city, you know, a lot of drugs, gangs, a lot of violence going on. You know, at one point we was known as uh, one of the top cities in America with the, you know, with the highest homicide uh, rate annually. You know what I'm saying? So these are the kind of conditions that, that I was raised in and I grew up in. And uh, Skyline was basically the cream of the crop, you know, for athletes. And, you know, a lot of the guys that I played with when I got to Skyline, um, they were they were really really good uh, in the city as far or w well known in the city for doing really well in like the Pop Warner leagues and the uh, 707 tournaments and stuff like that. So most of these guys was basically funneled to Skyline because Skyline had a huge reputation for not only excelling on the football field but the coach getting guys uh, Division One scholarships. You know, so um, it was it was challenging. You know, I didn't play football until my sophomore year in high school. You know, I always played as a kid and you know, in the streets and, you know, throw up tackle and all of that kind of stuff and flag. But um, I didn't put on a helmet until my sophomore year in high school, man. So I was a late bloomer. Um, I ended up making the JV team that year. Uh, did, you know, I did well. And, and I got the attention of the head coach and he moved me up to varsity for the playoffs that year. So junior year come around, I'm playing receiver, did really well, started to get attention from like a lot of colleges. Uh, mostly on the West Coast, like Pac-10 and the WAC and, you know, all these schools like that. And that blew my mind, man, because, um, you know, in my community, you know, college was never pushed. You know, education was never pushed. Um, it was all about surviving, you know, trying to trying to make it day by day. You know what I'm saying? So um, just just seeing those letters and having, uh, you know, the support system as far as, you know, my coaches introducing me to these coaches that could potentially change my life, man, I was all in. So. Uh, senior year come around, man, and, um, you know, coach called me to his office. He's like, man, uh, we don't have a quarterback, man. I need you to play quarterback. And I'm like, 
man, I'm getting letters from colleges to play receiver, man. Are you trying to make me switch positions, you know? Yeah. But, um, you know, that that's just an example of who I was and who I am to this day, man. I always put the team and other people before me, you know, and I did that. So he told me, you do this for me, I'll get you a scholarship. And um, he came through, man. So um, my grades wasn't the best. I had to work really, really hard to uh, to get my grades up to match my SAT scores. And uh, eventually, man, I, I did my thing and I, and I signed a scholarship, man. And I was on my way to college. Man, and 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 that's you know, I know some things happen after your senior year. It's, it's you know some ups and downs. And Coach June Jones, uh, I, I wanna we're gonna take a quick break here, Vaughn. But when we come back, I want I want you to share that sort of uh, that that scenario and what happened, how you actually ended up here in Hawaii. So we're going to mm -hmm. take a quick break. We're here with Devon Best. We'll be right back. Running It Back is brought to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser, bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive full digital access for $9.95 with code A High Thing. Hawaiian Telecom. Fiber power your TV and internet by calling 808-643-0900 or check availability at hawaiiantel.com. All right, we're back here with Devon. We're gonna dive in more into how he came to Hawaii. Yeah. So, Vaughn, we were just we were just talking, man, and how you ended up in Hawaii. So, you know, I really want you to sort of touch on that again because this is part of the journey, man. The ups, the downs, um, and this is why it's so inspiring. So, take us take us through that, brother. Uh, it's definitely been a roller coaster ride, man. Um, you know, you can't make it up, bro. So, um, extremely blessed, but. So right after I graduated high school, um, I ran into some trouble. I went and picked up some friends who was out, you know, stealing and doing things that they didn't have no business doing. I knew what they were doing. You know, I was young, I was dumb, and um, I thought I would get something out of it. And I did get something out of it, a year year locked up, you know. But uh, I learned my lesson, you know. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a tough transition just knowing that I had worked so hard to get this scholarship and it all be taken away from me in a matter of seconds, you know what I'm saying? So... Um, I ended up, uh, I was in county jail. I was 17 when I got arrested. I turned 18 three months after that. They sent me to county jail for three months. Um, finally got sentenced to a year at a boy's ranch, which is basically like a, um, a juvenile detention facility, uh, mm -hmm. like a dormitory, you know, with a bunch of beds. It's in the middle of nowhere. You know, you got cows and uh, pigs, and it's, it's basically on a farm, whatever. So, I ended up getting out of there uh, in, in September of 04, but leading up into my release, you know, Coach Jones, um, my coach uh, from my high school, John Bean, we all kind of got together and mapped out this plan and see how I can, uh, you know, go basically go from jail to Hawaii, you know, and uh, everybody played uh, key roles. Everybody played their part and everybody came through, man. So it was up to me to deliver. And next thing you know, I was off to paradise. Wow. What was that like mentally, though, you know? Like Man, anticipating uh, going to Hawaii, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, at that point in time, I was just so blessed and thankful for mm -hmm. a second chance. I was just like, uh, a lot things were moving really fast for me, you know. Um, you know, like I, I, I was talking to somebody the other day. It's like I didn't, I probably knew about two people as I got off the plane in Hawaii. Literally, two people probably had like 15, 20 bucks in my pocket, and um, it was a culture shock, obviously, but. Um, you know, I, I was I was just so grateful to, to be in a different space, you know. Um, you know, a lot of people where I'm from don't even make it out the city, you know, let alone the state. You know, here it is. I'm in paradise where people dream of going, you know what I'm saying? So I always kept that in perspective. But, um, yeah, man, um, you know, and I know we'll probably get there, but I literally went from, you know, being incarcerated, getting released, and then becoming a freshman All-American within like a 12-month span. So that's just a glimpse of how fast things were moving for me. It wasn't, yeah, it, it the situation that, that, that you were in, right? That's, hey, it happened. That's the cards you were dealt. Yeah, could you have made yeah. a, a different yeah. decision? But I, I've spoken to you, said, mm -hmm. no, you wouldn't change a thing because mm -hmm. it was a lesson that you learned, right? Yeah, man. That you knew, you. it just, it helped you, right? All these adversities yeah. we go through help us along the way. So... Man, June Jones, Hawaii, embrace you. You pay that back. You pay that forward by coming out here and, man, being, like, the all-time leading receiver ever uh, to come out of Hawaii. And you end up 
in the NFL. Dream come true, bro. Uh, I know I'm sort of fast forwarding to that, but it, it seems like it happened so fast. Uh, you know, your career at Hawaii, what's one thing, the most memorable thing that, that you will never forget? Man, there's just so many great memories, man. That was a um, that was a special time, man. And, and and the first thing that come to mind is just the memories off the field. You know, obviously everybody know about our success and the bond and the records and everything that we did as a team. But I mean, you know, Chad, you was already in the league doing your thing. You can ask Kev Maka, man. Like we were we we was boys off the field. You know what I'm saying? We we did, we did everything together off the field, and that's what made us much more stronger on the field. You know, that chemistry was there. Yeah. So. There's many memories, man. I, I don't even know if I can pick one, but uh, he has a he has I mean, apartment. The, he has apartment behind. <laughs> what <were> you, <laughs> you first who was staying in that freaking apartment? Yeah. Oh man, it was like it was like six of us in a two bedroom apartment, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Team, it's like, yeah. all right all right let's talk more about that right after this yeah let's get into that safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines are important tools to protect our families and community if you have any questions about the vaccines visit hawaiicovid19.com slash vaccine Oahu Dump Run, specializing in junk removal and bulk pickup service. Visit 808junkremovalnow.com. Okay, so we're here with Devon. Thank you for being here. We were just talking about this apartment that you all were living in. Yeah, Six I don't know guys if the, is that the most bedroom. memorable thing? Is that what you want to talk about here, Vaughn, or is there something else? Yeah, nah, yeah, I don't think that's the most memorable thing, but, you know... <laughs> Whatever y'all want to talk about. I mean, it was it was just special. I was just, like, to my point, like, it, we just bonded. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All the boys just like to hang out and just chill, have a good time, and enjoy each other's company, you know? So In paradise? But yeah. I think, yeah, in paradise, absolutely. Yeah. But I think, like, just right off the gate, um, you know, a lot of people don't know this. I've, I've mentioned this in a few interviews recently, as of uh, late. But um, I remember when I first met Colt, you know, we talked about, uh, doing the impossible and putting Hawaii on the map. And, you know, I was coming from a second, I was getting a second chance. He was getting a second chance. So everything we pretty much did from 2005 to 2007, me and him talked about it literally the first time we met, man. So that, uh, those are, those, that's, that's one of the, wow. that's one of the, that's one of the many things that uh, were probably the most important thing I remember um, just about that whole, you know, journey and the emotions and everything from 05 to 07, man, just the manifestation part of it, you know? Yeah, man. Speaking of Colt, man, rest in peace, brother. Rest in paradise. I'm repping him today. Yes, sir. Nice. nice. So, yeah, man. CV. Um, um, you know, I, I, I've never been the one to to really like attention and all of that stuff, but it felt good to just see the hard work kind of kind of pay uh, off in, 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 in some way, you know. And it kind of gave me confidence, like I can play at a high level. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we gotta be proud. You know, it's okay yeah, to be proud yeah, of, of, yeah, our, of yeah. our hard work and our accomplishments that come, come from that, man. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you had that realization. And that literally, like you said, boosted the confidence to continue. And like, I got yeah. this. I belong here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and shoot, <laughs> you belong because, you know, we know what transpired <laughs> afterwards, man. Undefeated season. Uh, like I talked about, you know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest receiver to ever come out of Hawaii. And you go on as a free agent. Right. Yeah. Sign with the Miami Dolphins. Man, let's talk about, you know, that NFL, man, career. I, I know you went from sort of, yeah, becoming a free agent. I'm sure, hey, everyone wants to get drafted. That's the goal. But I, mm -hmm. I think sometimes, I mean, I've watched it too. Free agents, they just had that, that extra chip on their shoulder, that extra motivation. You know, take us through that, Vaughn, like your NFL career. Um, yeah, what was that, man? What? Well, you hit it right on the nose, man. Just that, uh, just that underdog mentality, you know. Because even going back to high school, I wasn't the, I wasn't the guy on my high school team either. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, you know, just getting to Hawaii and and being able to, uh, you know, come in and having to prove myself. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't laid out for me. You know, so I w it was a familiar situation for me, so to speak. So, you know, obviously, I had three good years. Um, I had been talking, you know, to my family and. At that time, I had uh, was talking to an agent, and you know, we submitted my tape to the NFL. I got a second round grade just based off my tape. Got to the combine, didn't do too too good in the forty. 
uh, got to the pro day, did much better in the 40, but I ended up pulling my hamstring at the same time. So I wasn't able to uh, run routes for all the scouts. And during that, uh, during that time, we had every team there, you know, because they, you know, they was all over Colton. They mm-hmm. wanted to know who he was throwing to. So um, I signed with the Dolphins. They didn't draft any receivers that year. And uh, it was a new coaching staff coming in as well. So it was a no, excuse me, it was a no brainer for me to, uh, to get in that situation. I just needed a shot, you know, and, um, that's what they gave me. You know, they gave me the number 15 was 15 was hanging in my locker. And I, and I kind of looked at that as disrespect because during that time, you know, wide receivers were wearing the eighties numbers, you know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. when they gave me 15, they, I, I took it personal. Like, they don't, they don't think I'm going to be here long, you know? So, uh, I made it work, you know, and every time I, I saw that 15 in my locker on game day and practice, all of that, you know, those little things uh, came to mind, you know what I'm saying? So it, it was it was a journey, it was a struggle, but I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Man, that's what's up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we're going to hear more from you, uh, Devon, after this quick break. And uh, so, yeah, stick around, man. Devon Bess. Yeah, you. Bless. Bless. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> <laughs> Running It Back is brought to you by Aloha Termite and Pest Control, your local and leading pest and termite control solution in the state. Always providing you superior service with Aloha. Okay, we're back with Devon. Thank you again for being here. Your life is just amazing. All the adversities you've overcome, from your run it back moment yeah man i heard that that 15 that, that 15 has a story though yes. i heard someone to do someone with, uh, a guy but marshall uh, yeah some, some b Brian, marshall dude Brian, that want to Brian, buy Brian don't want to buy that number from you but what's yeah. that story man want to buy it? So, so. yeah that's a true story true story man enlighten true us story. von enlighten us well it's funny man brandon b marshall one of my good friends man uh when he first got to miami you know uh at that time we didn't have a quote-unquote number one receiver so um he was the biggest free agent um, guy on the market at that time. And uh, we ended up, you know, giving him a crazy deal. Um, he came in and, you know, we, we clicked immediately because, um, you know, most guys would be like, uh, this guy finna get all the balls or whatever. I'm, I'm not I'm not messing with him or whatever. I, my, my initial reaction was like, I'm finna eat because he gonna get all the attention. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and that was his approach with me too. He was like, "Man, we got a guy that can move the chains and get open. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the rock." So we clicked instantly. We worked hard. We definitely developed a really good relationship. And through that time, I want to say it was like a, a, a four to five month period where this guy will ask me about that number <laughs> every day, man. Like it would be times I walk into the locker room and I just look up. He's just sitting there waiting for me to walk in, bro. <laughs> so ask me, ask me for the number, man. Like he. You know, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but, you know, obviously he offered me money, he offered me a couple cars, watches or whatever. And uh, and for me, it wasn't about that, man. It was just uh, it was just a journey, man, to make that number and and, and to, uh, you know, all the things I had to overcome that that many, many people don't know about. You know, we'll, we'll be here all day kind of talking about the things I had to go through, you know, from, you know, from the combine all the way up into making the team. That was just a journey in itself, you know. Mm. But um, just to make the team and be productive, end up starting as a rookie, you know what I'm saying? Like, all, all those things clicked to me. And I, I was like, you can't put a price on that, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Man, and, and just, yeah. so, you know, for some backstory, Brandon Marshall was, a yeah, one of the top receivers. Uh, is, was this when he came from uh, Chicago? Or was it Denver? Jet, oh, the, oh, the, came yeah, from he, Denver. Denver. And he was, yeah, he wore Denver. number 15 there. Yep. So he wanted yep. his number. And nah, yep. Vaughn, I mean, that, that's, that's <laughs> respect. And I'm pretty sure he respected <laughs> you that much yeah. more for, yeah, for you know, sure. for not taking he the was a, <laughs> He was a little, he, you know, he, you know, he do the show uh, first take or whatever, you know. And he brought it up. Uh, he sent me the clip the other day. He was like, man, I'm still bitter at Devon for not giving me my number. I had a slump. I was dropping balls. I wasn't the same person because I didn't have my number, you know. But uh, it was it was rough. It was it probably was rough for him in the beginning. But uh, like you just said, see, I think he looked at it, you know, after after he retired. And, and, you know, it just showed that he respected me even more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. That's, that's what's up. And, yeah, so, you know. Man, your story, Vaughn, I, I keep bringing this, this, this up, but it's, it's through our adversities that really show true character. And that's, that's where the inspiration comes from. And, you know, I want to talk to you about, you know, at the, towards the end, I want you to go into the end of your Miami, you know, career, 
mm-hmm. going on to Cleveland and sort of like how all of that transpired. You know, we're, we're wrapping mm-hmm. up this segment where we got the, uh, the the YouTube version coming up here shortly. But tell us a little bit about the ending, how your how your Miami um, career ended. Well, it was it was bittersweet, man, because, uh, you know, at that point, you know, 2011. So I got there in 08 and. By the time 2011 came around, I had I had basically saw the whole team leave. You know, I was one of one of two guys that was there from the 08 team. That's that's coaches, executives, and all. You know what I'm saying? And that's rare. You know, and uh, the NFL, everything is a revolving door. You know, people come and go, come and go. And I had been there for a while. So as I continued to soar on the field and in the community, you know, with my foundation, um, you know, a lot of things started to change. You know, people started changing around me. Uh, my mental health just started deteriorating because um, it wasn't a fact that, uh, you know, that, that well, I, I'm going to just keep it real. Like, people was just changing up on me, you know, close close friends, you know, certain relatives. And uh, it became about money and it became about, um, you know, I used to do this for you. And, you know, people feeling entitled to 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 to, to what I have, you know what I'm saying, which, which blows my mind because mm-hmm. really I'm. You know, I don't I don't mean to brag and say it like this, but I'm I'm self made, man. You know, like a lot of people I had to really go through all this on my own. Yeah, you know nobody what I'm gave saying? You I had nothing. a few right. I had a few breaks here and there. Absolutely, you know, I absolutely I did. But who doesn't get you know, that's how everybody that's how it works with everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody has one or two people that get a break or whatever, but Yeah, man, um, hey, Vaughn, hold that thought because we got we're gonna wrap this this segment, but we I want you to finish the story on the YouTube okay. extended version. So all you guys watching uh, make sure you guys catch the rest of this on the extended version here. This is running it back, and we got UH legend Devon Best with us. Devon Best. Welcome back to our extended version on YouTube. This is the Running It Back podcast. I'm here with Chad Owens, Ryan Kilmucka, and UH legend Devon Best. Yeah, yes. man. Um, so Vaughn let's uh let's let's wrap that up so so people changing on you you know yeah. you're in that you know realization of man like what do you what what are you guys talking about man like i i've worked for this i've earned this and the, yeah. your mental health which is a huge thing which you're a huge advocate for mm-hmm. Ta- take us through that brother well for you know for me personally man a lot of it uh and i've realized this you know as i'm recovering and i'm seeing a therapist you know just kind of unpacking everything that I've been through, man. Um, there was just a lot of trauma, you know, especially, in, you know, as a child, man, some of the things I witnessed and saw and the way I was treated, you know what I'm saying? And um, that, that played an important role because a lot of people where I'm from, they don't, um, they don't know what it's like to be in that arena or in that space, you know what I'm saying? Where, where, where the tension's on you, you're making a lot of money and all of that. A lot of people don't understand that, you know what I'm saying? So, I wasn't I, I wasn't really prepared for that myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have nobody walking me through it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I kind of just had to bump my head here and there. But um, it just got to a point, man, where I didn't trust anybody. Um, everybody just wanted something out of me. You know, um, my brother had just got shot. I, you know, my, my, my younger brother who had just got shot in Oakland. You know, me and my wife was on the verge of divorce. Um, you know, my foundation was kind of going underground because uh we kind of start getting people started kind of getting away from the mission instead of uh, and, and looking at me as you know an opportunity and a dollar sign instead of the actual purpose of the foundation you know so little things mm-hmm. like that man and those are just three things out of many that i was dealing with so um yeah man i ended up getting traded by the dolphins which broke my heart because they kind of you know they kind of just traded me instead of helping me get to the root of what I was dealing with, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it was like, man, I did all this for y'all in the community and on the field, and then y'all just trade me. Then I get to Cleveland, and, you know, same thing. You know, my mental health wasn't there all the way, so they ended up releasing me. And you know how it is, man. When you get released, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow, especially mm-hmm. you know you know what kind of player you are, you know. If somebody tell you that, that you're not good enough, we don't want you no more, it's hard, you know. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, just – you know, I moved to Arizona. The situation happened in 2016, you know, was really was really one of my darkest, lowest moments, you know. But through all that struggle and all the adversity and all the triumph, everything that I went through, uh, I just got to a point where I just, uh, you know, I did a lot of praying, a lot of meditating, um, you know, listening to a lot of other people struggle. You know, that was really big, you know, um, 
therapy. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I started watching how I eat. You know, I started getting back. I started back exercising. You know what I'm saying? And all these things mm -hmm. just kind of helped my mental health uh, tremendously. You know, uh, with the combination of you know having the support from my family. You know, my my children, my wife, and um, you know, and and being vulnerable. I think that's the biggest thing too. Just being able to talk about it. You know, and helping other people. Because many people are struggling, man, and I and mm -hmm. I noticed that. I got to a point where I thought I was the only one going through the, everything I was going through, and that wasn't the case. So, um, yeah, man, just a lot of ups and downs. But I, I, looking back, I wouldn't want it any other way, man. It's, it's it's a beautiful struggle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, man, that, and that perspective, Vaughn, and, and that's what I want people to, to know. And uh, right now, I want to take this opportunity. Like, where can people follow you, Vaughn? I know you could your personal and, and your foundation. Give us some information about both. Um, I'm, I'm in the, I'm literally in the process of uh, finishing up my website. So I'll be basically posting that, you know, so people can go straight to the website and see everything I'm doing from my foundation to health and wellness tips to my, uh, my program business, uh, best route Academy, where I train kids, uh, how to, you know, do workouts and run routes and catch the ball and all that kind of stuff. But, mm -hmm. uh, my Instagram is Devon best 15. And then, uh, my Twitter is Devon best 15 as well. And then, my foundation's uh, Instagram page is the Best Route Foundation, and then you can also find me on LinkedIn at Divine Best. So, and that's what's up, man. Yeah, we were talking, bro. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. excited for, for your website and all your your, your this to be finalized because, you know, we talked about a lot of the physical, right? We're all mm -hmm. everyone focused mm -hmm. so much in athletics for youth or the physical, but we talked about the mental game, and I think that's the tool that's lacking. Right? In everything. We, in everything. In, in all life, the problems. Yeah. Like everything. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. So I personally think. You're going to offer that mental strengthening as well. And that's, and that's huge, bro. That's huge. That's, that's what I'm looking forward to, to seeing unfold. And I'm going to be right there helping you out whenever, whenever you need. Because I know you talked about Hawaii. You know, you're going to get that going as well, man. So I'm excited for you, bro. Absolutely. I appreciate that, man. You hit it right on the nose, though, man. It's uh, the, the mental is, is, is just as, if not more important than the physical, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in football terms, everybody can catch, everybody can run fast and all of that, but your mental, um, you know, as far as going harder or, you know, knowing how to read the coverage or the defense, that's, what's going to separate you, you know, and then in life, you know, um, you know, you can go to the gym and work out and do all this, but if you're, um, you know, constantly around negativity and you're mm -hmm. not expressing yourself and things like that. Uh, you'll look good on the outside, but you'll be all messed up on the inside. And that's kind of my approach, man, from the inside out, you know? Mm. Super good inspirational. Shit. All right. Time for <laughs> Ryan's rapid questions. Here we go. So this going to rapid response, all right? So, you know. First thing that comes to first mind. First thing come to mind. First thing come to mind. Oh, yes. man. What, what, what you about to say, Ryan, man? What you about to say? <laughs> I don't know. Some crazy stuff. I know you about, I know you about to say something crazy, man. No, nah, it's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be fun. All right. All right. All right. We're going to start off with the easy questions, all right? All right. Favorite color? Green. Green. Mm. All right, guys. Dog or cat? Dog. Dog. All right. Here we go. Miami or Cleveland? Miami all day. Man. Got you. Indica <laughs> or sativa? All day. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it's been a while since I, you know, I partook in that. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely Indica, man, for sure. Nice. Basketball or football? I know you love both. Ah, oh, man. That's, that's, that's a toss-up. You know, early on, it was obviously basketball. That was my thing. But then football kind of took me to places that I never thought I would ever – see or experience you know what i'm saying so i'm in the middle with that got you sunrises or sunsets sunrise lovely mm. okay what's what's easier to win an nba championship or an nfl championship super bowl easier to win yeah what's easier to win <laughs> nba man you know nba nba championship all right. Okay. It's tough. You know, you know how football is, man. It's, that football is tough, man. Yeah, man. Not, I'm not saying NBA is not, but football is just another animal, though. You yeah, know, football. You, you need wise, Tom Brady, bro. Like, you, you need Tom Brady. That's what it is. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay, they sell for the locals here. Aloha, show you or Kiko Man. I'm gonna have to go with the show you, man. I'm gonna have to go with the Aloha, show you. Got you. Aloha, show you. Yeah. Blue Tropics or Mai Tai. 
Hey, I haven't heard of them. I haven't heard of them in a while. Uh, man, probably my ties. I'm gonna say my ties. All right, all right, all right. Last one. Let's go with who's your Mount Rushmore of rappers? Like your pick your top four. Ah oh, man, man, man. Top four. Like, is that like dead and or alive? Dead or alive. Or Mount, alive. Mount Mount Rushmore. Who's the top? Top, top four. Top four. Um, I'm gonna have to. I got to put Tupac in there. You gotcha. feel me? Mm-hmm. Got to put Pac in there. Uh, so it, are we talking like impact? We're talking about lyricists? Everything. Like what, what, everything, bro. Because I got guy, I got people, you know, where I'm from in the Bay that, you know, that I love, but most people won't even know. You know what I mean? So it's kind of weird. All right. So I'm going to go. All right. Here we go. Tupac. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, J. Cole. Okay. Oh. Got you. Ooh, I like J. Cole. Uh, His new album was fire. Ace, album was Ace, fire. Ace, Ace Hood. Ace Hood, he up there. Ace Hood. Ooh, Ace Hood. Um, I'm gonna look him up. Was that three? That's three. Yeah. One more. Man. Nipsey Hustle. Ooh, Ooh, the marathon continues, yes. my guy. Marathon, the marathon, man. And, and 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 to most people, like they probably be like, you know, no, it's better people, but I just their yeah, music resonate with yep. me more just because of my journey and the stuff I've been through. Got you. you know what I'm saying? Got you. Got you. I like that. Nipsey's, Nipsey was a real one, though. I got to Nipsey was real, yeah. man. Nipsey, okay, one, Nipsey was before his time. One man, last you know? question. Yeah. Who's your favorite football player? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because I'm a fan of a lot of people. It's not mm-hmm. just one person. That's why I don't know, you know. But, yeah, football. I, top top three. Top I three. mean, I would say, I would, okay, I would say Jerry Rice, Tim Brown. Um... Yeah, really and just Devon them two. Best. I mean, I, you know, Devon Best. Yeah, myself. I know, right, I know. <laughs> All right. Who's... No, but Tim, Tim, Tim Brown and, and Jerry Rice, you know, I grew up in Oakland. So they, yeah. you know, they was playing yeah. for the 49ers and the Raiders. So I would hear about them a lot. You know what I'm saying? So Toughest, toughest op- opponent you played against. Toughest. Uh, or DB. D- like... D- yeah, or, you know, uh, d- yeah, toughest uh, opponent you played against. Uh, I would say Darrell Revis. Ooh, okay. yeah, they would. So they would, they would match him up on me all the time because I was like quick and shifty yeah. and stuff. And, and uh, they would probably they would double Brandon and then put Revis on me. You know, that was kind of a game plan. But we would battle. You know, I, I got I got him a few times here and there. But we would, we would go at it. He was really good though. You know, quick, athletic, strong, nice. fast. He had the whole. I package. love hearing this. Wow. I love hearing this kind of insight. You know, you don't you don't hear this kind of insight. Ooh, I love it. But what what he really wants to say is that no matter nobody, like man, there's really no one out there that that, that hey, can Hey, hey, hey! At one point, I really felt like that. Could yeah. nobody mess with me, bro? Because like, not only on the physical side, you know, as far as separating and running routes, but my mental was just on another level. Because I was a, I was like in the film room every day. I was a I was a geek when it came to studying mm. film, dude. Like, mm. and that's and that's why I was able to be so successful on third down because I knew what my opponent was doing every time. He couldn't stop me. On third downs, would you study third downs like that? That was. Oh my god, I studied everything, but obviously third down was like my thing. You know what I'm saying? So I put extra time with that. You know, and they and 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 the offensive coordinators I was with, they would always give me these option routes, so I couldn't lose. You know, I I just I just basically went off his leverage every time, and they can't stop it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's the run and shoot. That's basically that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a lot from the run and shoot, man. Like especially rookie camp, like that. That that's what separated me was the run and shoot because it was guys that was coming from University of Florida, all these big schools. They couldn't even tell the difference from cover three and cover two. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Hey, same I was, thing. Co, you know too. CO, it's the same know? thing. When I got to Jacksonville, yeah. I got that yeah. same yeah. like where you how you run that route? What how you know this? How you, I don't know, right. but this is what I did in college. Like you don't know this? Yeah. No, we right. didn't do that. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Shout out to June Jones and Miles yeah, Davis. Real, Davis. Real. Yeah, the OGs. I learned, I learned a lot from them guys, man. So much, man. You know. But well, and hey, look, man, we're, we're gonna wrap this up, Vaughn. Oh, um, man. man, what a what a pleasure, man. Like Such I told you when we we chatted, story. man. I'm proud of you. Um, Thank you, man. A lot of people in in those situations, you know, break. And and they yeah, you know yeah, and they, they can't bounce back they can't crawl out they don't have the support system and man, bro man. You, you're yeah. gonna be a 
you're already an inspiration and the things you're going to be doing you know in the near future bro it's going to be changing lives so i appreciate you for that hawaii loves you man we love you brother Mike, likewise man love you all man much yeah. love much respect man so appreciate thank you for you, having me yeah man thanks for coming on and, and again thank you guys all for listening yep this is just running thank it you, back and yeah Devon you're welcome Bess. you're welcome all right, man. Bless. Pizza. Peace, love. Hello, <laughs> brother. Much love, guys. Much love. Running it back was presented to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser and Hawaiian Telecom.